I was going through some stuff a while ago and had uh, happened upon um, one of my early prototypes. Um, I'd mentioned, oh, I think on a forum a couple times, uh, oh, I used to do fish store stuff, and this was a automatic frozen fish food feeder. And people uh, I wanted to mainly show this because I know there's been some talk recently on Peltier junctions and thermoelectric coolers and such. So um, mainly that's it might be be of help. This was basically uh, designed. I had uh, either two modules or a single module. This is a single hundred watt module, which was the largest that could have been purchased at the time uh, when I did this. And um, basically, then we had a hundred watt cooling this large block that would hold. Um, the frozen fish food, and then we had a uh, you know bubblegum machine style you know offset holes that would dump uh, one one at a time uh, up to three cubes at a time. This was designed for a specific brand, I guess Lifeline, um, and then we also had it so you know you could sleeve out uh, and clean where the fish food went in. Um, the point here was, is yeah, we had 100 watts that would cool this block. The insulation's all been removed, so the insulation basically ran up to about the fins, about the middle. You can see some of the thermal epoxy there. Insulation covered. We had an insulated lid here. Um, insulation runs all the way down to the bottom, all the way to the edges here. And then uh, lever actuated. Uh, I used the the lever system for another purpose, but use the memory wire, the titanium nitinol uh, wire for the actuation there. Um, and the main thing is the is the heat sink here. Uh, this heat sink, uh, we worked with a heat sink company uh, to design this, and this was designed to offset a hundred watts of heat and not raise more than 10 degrees from ambient temperature. Um, so, uh, in cases where people might be thinking of using Peltiers uh, to <clears throat> for uh, you know the thermoelectric generators as opposed to the coolers um, for power generation, and, and a lot of times you you know um, it might need to be a pretty big heat sink if you don't want a large temperature uh, change on, on on your other side. Now the other thing to note, as you can see screws here. This had four. 100 cubic feet per minute fans, four 12 volt fans that were 100 CFM a piece, and all four of those were required to hit that 10 degree delta at 100 watts heat on this heat sink. Um, so it's a pretty ch pretty chunky sized heat sink to accomplish that. And I will note uh, we were able to maintain about 10 degrees inside the tubes here um, when it was insulated, uh, about 80 degrees. In a room and room temperature environment, um, and if you went to a single four-inch fan, that raised this a full 10 degrees uh, inside the the cold chamber up to 20. So, and then similarly, uh, the single 100 watt raised another 10 degrees versus two 50 watts um, at that particular point in time. So again, just uh, you know, this thing's pretty old, 13, 14 years old, but to give people an idea. Um, of maybe heat sink size and mass um, when we're when you get into these thermoelectrics and 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 again this was set up active uh, if it was passive with no fans this would only be able to do about 25 watts uh, with the same 10 degree net rise maybe 30 watts so so the the fans do make a difference there but then they take power um, so yeah that's all thanks bye.